Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We, we will just wait for a few minutes to have everybody uh, log in and we will be starting very soon. Thank you. Okay, I think we're we're good to get started and then more people can join as we go. Excellent. All right. So I want to welcome everyone today and thank you for joining us. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here at the Chicago Booth Executive Program in Algorithm Information Session. Today we're joined by several guests from Newton Education Services, Chicago Booth, as well as a former program participant. So I would like to introduce myself as Amanda Getz, the Chicago Booth, the Associate Director of Executive Education. I'm here with Nelly L. Zayat, co-founder and director of Newton Education Services, and Mina Vetri Weirs, Associate Dean of Executive Education. We're also joined by Amir L. Tolanaki from Ed Zahar. So with that, we'll begin today's session with a program overview from Mina, followed by Q&A. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Mina. Thank you, Amanda, and I'm so happy to be here and sharing with you the 2023 uh, Chicago Booth Executive Program in Laguna. Um, what I'd like to start with is just taking a step back and give you some background and how we got here. The first program um, is one of three, started in 2019, October of 2019. After that, um, unfortunately, we were all slowed down due to the pandemic, and we put this program on hold so we can come back and do it in person once again. And so um, the next second offering uh, is in March 4th, 2023. Um, and so in terms of the background, uh, we were Chicago Booth were approached by Nasif Sawiris, who is one of our University of Chicago alums, uh, to work on a program together with the Ministry of Planning and bring Chicago Booth Executive Education to Egypt. The, the impetus for this is all of the changes going on in Egypt since 2018 and prior, and again, now, uh, and how do we bring together ex executives across multiple industry sectors? And how do we bring together the talent that is across the ministries to get the best of the best, working together, collaborating, and learning the Chicago Booth approach to business, which is high impact, very rigorous, as well as um, really focused on helping you develop strategy and identify those blind spots. And so we, we started coming in 2018, 2019 to really learn about key business challenges, key governmental challenges, interview across a variety of sectors. And we designed this program specifically for Egypt. What we heard was we, in Egypt, continue to be confronted with challenge and change. Um, we have a lot of uncertainty. So how do we overcome that un uncertainty and continue to operate, to build, to innovate and think strategically? So that is how the program 
came together. And that's really what I consider the, the core theme of the program. And we'll get into the learning objectives. So how this program not only was built by Chicago Booth, um, we have very, a variety of partners supporting us. I'm sitting here in Chicago today where um, all of our faculty are as well. Um, and so we have partners with the Sweerus Foundation for Social Development and Nelly is here representing Newton Education Services to support us on the ground in Cairo and across Egypt. So um, Nelly, if you can give a little history as well, that would be great. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mina. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, just a side a housekeeping note, if, if you have any questions as we go along, please type them in the, in the Q&A uh, panel. And I'm sure we're going to address most of them during the session. But in case we don't, we'll, we'll be sure to go back and, and answer all your questions. Uh, as Mina said, this program is a partnership between a number of entities, obviously the University of Chicago, uh, Chicago Booth School of Business Executive Education, uh, the Sawiris Foundation for Social Development, and the Ministry of Planning here in Egypt, and uh, Newton Education Services I'm representing tonight. Um, all of us together have, have come to, to make this program a reality, and, and we were able to do that in 2019, like Nina mentioned, and that's the cohort that uh, Amr here is, uh, was a participant of. Um, the idea of, uh, of this program came together, like, as Nina mentioned, uh, through Nasif Sawiris, who himself is an alum of the University of Chicago. Uh, he um, uh, asked the University of Chicago to, to come to Egypt, the Chicago Booth Executive Education, and uh, they met with uh, various stakeholders, uh, major players in the Egyptian economy, both in the public and private sectors. And, uh, to, and as a result of these meetings, the uh, Chicago Booth Executive Education Program put together this program, like Nina said, specifically for Egypt. So this is not a program that exists at, in Chicago or in any of the other campuses. This is specifically for Egypt to bring together in one classroom setting, the public and private sector uh, executives who play strategic roles in, in Egypt. Uh, and so the idea was to bring them together for two weeks to sort of discuss and unpack all of these big uh, headings and, and, and topics that are usually very uh, complicated and uh, Ne we don't necessarily have the time to think about them and reflect on them in our daily, very busy lives. And this is another, or one of the main reasons why this program is set in El Guna, so that uh, people are away from their usual work setting and have the opportunity to, to, uh, to discuss and, uh, and uh, exchange ideas and collaborate. I see Amr smiling because then El Guna also has other other sides to it. I'm sure he's going to talk about that because there are activities that happen outside of the classroom. Um, but uh, basically, it is really a one of a kind program in that sense that uh, it offers this unique opportunity for public sector and private sector participants to come together. And our role at Newton is really to, to find those people, to find the right candidates for the program to apply. Uh, there is a very rigorous selection process that is not done by Newton, <laughs> nor is it done by the Savitos Foundation. It is strictly the University of Chicago. So uh, we are not responsible for who gets in. We're only responsible for who <laughs> is encouraged to apply. Um, and so um, we're very happy here to be here tonight and to share more about the program. Uh, Mina will tell you more about the actual the content of the program, faculty profiles, etc. And I know Amr will have a lot to say about his experience over there. So thank you again for being here. And I'll hand it back over to you, Mina. Thank you, Nelly. That's a great uh, backdrop to the discussion today. So what I'll do, just to kind of give you the flow of uh, today's info session, uh, Amanda is going to be pulling up uh, the brochure. I'm going to tell you a little bit about who Chicago Booth is um, it, it, with a bit more specifics. Then um, the actual layout of the design of the program, meaning the days, uh, the content, 
as well as the faculty. And then we can get into some key dates coming up, including our application deadline. That's why we're having another info session. Um, so I'm going to keep that piece short and really uh, spend time with Amr here. Um, Amr and I met uh, at an info session in person in Cairo many years back. So uh, I'm sure he will uh, share all kinds of stories and I'll have some questions for you, Amr. Uh, and after that, we'll do some Q&A and leave time for um, any and all of your questions. We'll be happy to answer. Sound good? Amanda, if you can um, go ahead and uh, share your screen with the brochure. Excellent. And so if you can, um, uh, can everyone see this? We can blow it up a little bit more. We can get to the second page, I believe. So you, you see here on the cover, um, and hopefully all of you received the PDF of this brochure, uh, that is George Wu, one of our faculty, Lucia Nunzio, if you can pause right there, Amanda, um, and, and scroll back to that page with Lucia. So Lucia is another one of our faculty members. So just to kind of give you uh, an explanation who is Booth. So Chicago Booth School of Business is a part of the University of Chicago, a very, very esteemed and old institution um, that uh, was founded by the Rockefellers actually. And as part of the University of Chicago, the School of Business is consistently ranked one, two in the world on our, um, our, our School of Business and Economics. We uh, regularly uh, also um, feature or uh, receive Nobel Prizes. Two weeks ago um, was our latest. We have 10 Nobel Prize winners, specifically in the School of Business. But the University of Chicago has 95. So um, the institution is extremely rigorous in research. So not, not just the rankings, right? Some of the research coming out of the School of Business, as well as the University of Chicago, has impact across the world, moves markets. Um, Richard Thaler, who won in 2017, again, one of our faculty members, is really considered um, the, the professor who put together behavioral economics. Doug Diamond, who won just two weeks ago, um, researched with um, several of his partners and wrote about um, the role of banks in a financial crisis. And a lot of the research affected how the US and global markets reacted to the final financial crisis from 2008 and on. Um, and Ben Bernanke is another one of the, the winners who actually drew from Doug Diamond's research. And so he won the Nobel Prize and we're extremely ecstatic about that. Um, so really the, the caliber of our faculty are quite amazing. So not just theory, but actual practice. Many of our faculty, especially within executive education. So executive education is non-degree, for professionals and executives. So the faculty that come in and teach in our programs have been consultants, have worked in industry, research in industry, regularly consult CEOs around the world, and as well as work and teach in our, um, you know, with our alums, uh, as well as uh, teach in our MBA programs. So they have a broad skill set and they're extremely passionate. Um, and we want to bring that impact and demonstrate that impact in Egypt. Um, actually, there's if you can scroll up. Amanda, thank you. So that's that's kind of the broad brush. Um, Nellie mentioned other campuses. Uh, when I say we're global, we're the only business school to have physical campuses in all in, in three different continents. So we have the Chicago booth. Bleacher Center, where we teach all of our executive programs in the heart of downtown Chicago. We have Hyde Park Campus, which is the home of University of Chicago. So that's um, for the Americas. In EMEA, we have um, 
a brand new campus that was built in London uh, that just opened up. Uh, I think it's been six months now. So uh, it's state-of-the-art campus. And then we have our Hong Kong campus, which is for all of Asia and APAC region. And that was open in 2018. And um, it's, it's an amazing space. So besides those campuses, our team, including Amanda and myself, we regularly travel the world to deliver programs to work with executives. So while we don't have a campus directly in Cairo, we work with um, the Swears Foundation as well as um, the Swears family uh, to deliver the program in Alguna. So there is a dedicated campus for our program. So that gives you kind of the, the lay of the land of uh, Chicago booth. So let's get into the program. So I mentioned um, earlier that NASA Suarez came to us to really help shape a program and deliver a program in Egypt so we can draw the best of the best across sectors, the government as well as the private sectors, into a space where they learn together and they collaborate. We want to see the future leaders of Egypt really advance and advance together across sectors. So the program um, was designed for Egypt, meaning the content that we draw is specific. It's a management program. So it's a core of what we teach, but in how it's sequenced and how it's designed um, in the, the rigor over 14 days in Guna is, is truly unique. We don't have this type of program anywhere else. Um, our peer schools, such as Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, um, LBS, no one has a program like this either. So it is, it's, it's amazing and remarkable uh, to, to be able to do this. So uh, what I want to get into next is just the content, the core content and the 14 days. So Amanda, if you could scroll to the, the grid. Perfect. So um, in the brochure, you'll find the schedule and the rundown. So what is it? The program begins March 4th and ends the 17th. And each and every day in the program, we'll prepare you, we'll, prior to the program, we'll prepare you, but you will be challenged. Your peers will be challenged in the room, the participants. The faculty, they want to learn from you. Right, so it's going to be an extremely interactive, um, highly uh, rigorous, meaning really um, focus on learning and breaking you out of the day to day and bringing you in a place where you can learn, which may not be always comfortable, especially to many executives who haven't sat in the classroom before. So um, my team is here to, to kind of shepherd that process along and the faculty will travel from Chicago to Guna to specifically teach in this program and all faculty have been selected very uniquely based on their content and their passion and they can't wait to come back based on the talent they've seen so far in the first cohort so the the program kicks off um, in Guna with a reception and keynote speaker. We have several key, uh, speakers that come in from across the world that are not faculty, but bring in their research or their experience in topics that supplement to the learning of the program. Um, we then have a very curated schedule. We have leadership, how to perform as a leader for yourself, but in a team environment as well. And then what does that mean, high performance leadership, now that we've been through a pandemic? The definition has even changed since um, the last time this material was taught. Where you learn about strategy and strategic thinking, innovation, um, how you go beyond the disruption and innovate. How do you manage that? How do you um, think about influence, utilize behavioral economics? 
how to negotiate and decision make. You'll learn new technology and methods um, that are being used today. We're not going to be applying some of those methods, such as AI, but you will learn as executives what that means and the strategy behind it in order to um, lead a team. Marketing analytics is a core part of the program. And if you could scroll down, Amanda. And we'll end the program um, with the faculty director speaking about risk and uncertainty and fintech in the upcoming changes in finance. So it's a, a pretty rigorous um, schedule. You will not always be in the classroom. You will be outside of the classroom. There'll be multiple methods of learning. As I mentioned, speakers is a part of it. Classroom experience is a part of it, whether it's through a case study or it's through um, interactive group work. We'll have multiple group work uh, opportunities throughout the program. Um, and then presentation skills that are incorporated there. Um, and we'll also um, make sure you have time for networking and fun. That's a big part of this. The network you leave with is going to have a high impact. Um, and impact is what we want to make. Um, and impact to me, how I define it for this program, is truly about the learning objectives a participant comes in with, as well as their sponsor. And not only how that is achieved during the course of the program, but years after, right? So we will do follow-ups six months after. Post-program, we'll do evaluations. We really want to see the change. That's why the program is offered over three years and hopefully more in the future, we don't know. Uh, but the cohort that we're bringing together is, is uh, definitely gonna be um, the ones making the impact. And as the cohorts grow, we already have the first one. We had a reunion uh, in September when we were in Cairo, Amanda and I. And uh, it's been three years and we had great, great interaction. I asked a lot of follow-up questions actually from the first uh, program, which uh, Amar, you missed. Uh, but it, you know, we're gonna be continually learning. This is a lifelong process. So once an individual goes through the program, you are absolutely part of the Chicago global community of executives. So that's a big broad brush. Um, if we have time, um, I'd love to have Amanda jump in and talk about the faculty in the profiles. Absolutely. <clears throat> so thank you so much, Mina, for that really robust introduction. I want to just highlight some of the faculty that we have at Chicago Booth. Um, obviously, you've heard about our numerous Nobel Prize winners and um, just some of the amazing research that's been done here at Chicago Booth. Now, the faculty lineup, which you can see here, has been uh, designed to be very intentional. One of the amazing things about this program is the diversity of experience, not only the types of interactions you're going to have in the classroom, but also the pedagogy. This is not just straight lecture. This is um, discussion, experiential education, um, you know, group work, all these different methods uh, helping you achieve your learning objectives. In that diversity, we've also selected a number of, part of faculty that are both clinical and tenured. So what does that mean? We have faculty like Randy Krosner, who's also the faculty director, doing significant research on banking systems. We have George Wu and Santos that are also involved in doing research on behavioral science and in AI and marketing. And then we also have our clinical professors and our adjunct professors. Lindsay Lyman, for example, is going to be teaching entrepreneurship and innovation. And in addition to being a graduate of the Booth School of Business, she is also a former McKinsey uh, advisor and currently serves sort of as, a, as a consultant to McKinsey on their innovation practice. Greg Bunch and Lucia have had significant experience working with startups and Fortune 500 companies. And they will be teaching a little bit about entrepreneurship and um, high performance teams and high performance leadership. So how do you lead not only teams, but also how do you um, identify 
your leadership strengths as an individual and bring them to your organization. So that is um, a little run through of our faculty. This faculty lineup is basically the same as it was in 2019 with the exception of Greg Bunch and we made that change based upon some feedback that we received. Um, but we're really excited to welcome him to the program and think that this new cohort is really going to enjoy his, his wisdom and experience. So that's mm -hmm. just a little bit about faculty. I'm sure more questions will come up, but I'm, I'm happy to turn it back over to Nina. Thank you, Amanda. And so let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to finish up with who's in the program, how do we select, and some important dates. And then I'd love to have her jump in. Um, Amanda, if you can scroll up to the, the page with the selection criteria. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so is this program right for you? We always ask this question. Um, the uh, program and in, in how it's constructed will have 50 total participants. It's a big class, but it's a typical size for um, our learning environment. The, the two cohort, the one cohort, which is comprised of public and private sector, um, will have the same selection criteria and process. So there'll be 20 um, applicants from across multiple ministries. We're working with Dr. Hala Saeed in the Ministry of Planning, and they are nominating, and we are processing their applications and screening. We are also, why I was in Egypt in September and why we're working with Newton Education today, is doing outreach to several companies um, and identifying and helping them nominate. So we'll have 30 total spots for the, the private sector. And who should be in? We're talking about, um, I think, the people who can make the most impact and get the most value for this program are senior level decision makers, strategic decision makers. That could mean they have manage a PL or soon will manage a PL, um, responsible for strategy, responsible for um, multiple teams at a senior level. So they could be a CEO or they could be an SVP, but they could also be a business owner. So we really want a diverse classroom. That's how really the Chicago Booth approach, where we bring in the faculty's theories and a diverse classroom and bring that together in a cohort experience where you network and learn from each other. That's, that is what, you know, is the approach that delivers impact. And so um, we don't have set criteria. We have here recommendations. So 12 years of experience could be much higher we had several uh, participants who had 20 plus years, and we had some with slightly lower. Um, we don't use that as a, a, a key. English proficiency is a requirement and um, very uh, um, fluent in English. Um, we have uh, also the requirement for nominations from a sponsor. So in the application process, you will not only identify your learning objectives, but the sponsor will identify what objectives they have for you. And that's a really core part of the, the program in, in how we select. We ask for CVs and we will conduct interviews based on who applies. And during the interview process is really our application process and how we identify the best make of the cohort. Um, we'll use behavioral science. We have our own methodology. Um, as you probably know, for an MBA, it's highly selective and rigorous. We use similar tools in exec ed to find the best of the best um, for the program. Um, companies uh, are welcome to nominate as many people 
as you'd like. But I wanted to be clear from uh, our previous experience, we may take one, two, maybe no one from an organization, dependent on who comes together in this cohort. And again, direct all questions to Booth, please. Uh, it's not a Newton uh, education decision, nor is it a Sawyer's Foundation decision. We handle all application decisions. So um, Amanda and I can certainly follow up with you on that. Um, so that's at a high level. Anything I missed, Amanda, um, other than the application deadlines, November 27th? <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to add that, that the application deadline is, is November 27th. But I think one thing to say is that, you know, while this is a recommended profile, there may be applicants that meet all of these requirements as well. I think it's also important to say that just because you meet all of these requirements, it does not necessarily guarantee admission. A big part of our admissions process is really reviewing the entire class holistically to determine how all of you are going to fit together. And if it's going to be beneficial um, to one another to have, you know, this diversity in the classroom. Thank you, Amanda. So with that, let me uh, jump over to an actual participant, Amr. So we met at an info session, and I remember you had so many questions for me, um, and. Uh, showed up prepared to enroll and we had a great discussion um, and you went through the whole process. So I wanna start out with, you know, what was your expectation when you first met with Chicago Booth, learned about the program, and then you went through the program and then how was it? So just uh, would, love, would love for you to share your thoughts. Sure, um, thank you, Mina. Um, so when, when I first heard about the program, um, I was also, I'm undergoing a, a, a transition, a career transition, where I was um, getting a more senior role in the organization. And so my role uh, moved from being um, a more transactional or a transaction leader to more of firm management. And so there was this need to quickly accelerate uh, my development, my people management skills, um, my thinking on, on resource allocation and, and managing risk and uncertainty. Um, and I have to say the program couldn't have come at a, at, a, at a more perfect timing. There are a few things that today um, I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, in a very challenging endeavor, uh, especially I would say I would reference two or three very specific um, work streams from the program. So Lucia's uh, leadership, uh, class was fantastic. Um, it's actually something that I'm using every day right now in my current role as I'm, I'm, I'm partner, partnering with one of the participants on the webinar here, Wagi, um, who I'm really pushing to attend the program. Uh, to, to, together, we're, we're leading a, a turnaround of um, a distressed company and all the things I've learned from Lucia and um, the, the negotiation and, and nudging classes came in very handy as well as we were negotiating with banks, with suppliers, um, all these tools and, and, and tricks um, were very helpful. I had, to be honest, expected, um, you know, a typical general management program that would touch upon some functional areas, but I was amazed actually at, at uh, the, the content was, was, I would say, much, much at a much higher level than, than what I expected. And to be honest, um, the the cohort was just fantastic i mean i formed some lifelong friendships um uh, this program and i would say i used everyone in my network super <laughs> strategically over the past two years especially people that i wouldn't have had access to on the public sector side um the the the, the contacts were just amazing the fact that we had spent two weeks together you know in a pressure cooker accelerated some of the trust building process that needed to happen. And so th these are people that I, I today I call some of my best and closest friends. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. I would say um, uh, one of the biggest concerns I remember you brought up is who are going to be the other participants in this program? And I, I'm putting a lot of a focus on, you know, getting into this program but who else is coming from the ministries? And can they step up? Can the other private sector 
be at the same level as me. So talk a little bit more about this network and kind of the how you interacted with them in the program and then after. Sure. So so in the program, it was it was good to me for me actually to see um, some of the people serving um, in the public sector. Um, they were way ahead uh, of my expectations. Uh, their classroom participation also brought another perspective. You know, in, in the business world, you sort of you're focused on you know very commercial drivers, and it was very good to hear how this is perceived on the regulatory side and and see how you know the executive branch of the government thinks about these things. I've had a, a very close friend of mine who ended up uh, the the, the co chair of the cohort with me, Sara who's the undersecretary uh, of finance who's handling all the tax and customs um, affairs. And that came in super handy because just a year, short of a year after the program, there was this new e-invoice tax system. And I worried about all of our portfolio companies. So I called her up. I took all our (laughs) CFOs, had a meeting with her, had her explain the system to all of us. And then we were prepared when that system started rolling up Another participant who became a very good friend, uh, Karim, the CEO of, uh, of Reliance Industries. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually collaborating on a few projects right now. Um, so that, that came in also super helpful. He was able to mentor me through the process um, of what we're doing right now, Wadi and I. Um, so that came in super handy um, as well. Oh, those are great examples. So it's, it's truly the impact, right? Yes. Um, yes. You're learning the tools, you're learning frameworks. So, booth, you know, we people typically who come out of the booth uh, community say, booth taught me uh, not what to think, but how to think, right? A lot of times, uh, you know, and I think I've heard, especially in Egypt, right? It's skills based training, but it's not about skills, yes. Ultimately, you as the participant and executive own the skills, but we're going to give you the tools and the framework so you can be a better decision maker. And when you have this network who thinks in the same way with the same tools, that's it's pretty amazing, right? I mean, it's uh, unique. Totally. I mean, never in my life would I have thought, you know, I've wrote many papers uh about the financial crisis throughout my university years and, and things like that. But I would have never thought that I'd be in the same room with one of the governors of the Federal Reserve System, who was actually one of the people in the room on the <laughs> phone with the Secretary of the Treasury and the President. You know, he had a front row seat to the financial crisis and he very generously shared his experience um, on that and shared some of the, the tools they used in the years after. Uh, I would have never thought that I could get in the classroom and, and learn about, you know, managing risk on that scale, you know? Yes. And, and it's not just academic, right? It's very personal too. Yes. Because we address the whole human, right? It's not yep. just the mind, but the emotions that go in to leadership, yeah. how you collaborate, how you um, plan forward. Um, and the personal aspects of your life. And that's obviously come, you know, that came before the pandemic. Yeah. So I have another question for you. Um, what would you say is the biggest surprise? Unexpected, you did not expect this in the program. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just say something very cryptic and I'll leave people, I'll leave it to people's <laughs> okay, imagination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did not think I will put on a swimsuit during the program. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> during instruction hours, at least. Yes. So that goes into, you are going to be challenged in so many ways, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, we don't mean to make people functionally uncomfortable, but we're going to take you out of the day-to-day and right. learning is uh, absolutely the focus. And I, I honestly, before the program, I don't think I've ever had two weeks of super uninterrupted focus time to just reflect on so many material and, and get time to reflect on my own thoughts as well. I mean, I love the debrief sessions that we were having every night. 
prior to the social activities. Yeah. And I, I think I came, I must have came, come back with what was around 20 pages of just me downloading a lot of things that I've right. learned over the years. And I was just able to articulate during that time off and, and stepping back from, from the daily grind, you know. Yes. Oh, that's so, that's, that's wonderful. Those reflections you carry with you, right? Yes. Excellent. So uh, in terms of the, the folks on this, this webinar right now in info session, any words of advice you can give them? I think put, put a lot of effort in the application and in, in demonstrating um, your differentiated skill set throughout the interview process. And I'd say I'd encourage everyone to apply and to actually get their friends to apply. I think this is a really unique program. And, and hopefully I'll, I'll try to find a, a way through the firm to, uh, to North of Soiris. And I'll try to uh, <laughs> finally get him to convince you to uh, open an Egypt campus. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, excellent. Thank you, Oliver. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, so Nelly or Amanda, should, shall we go to the Q&A um, or anything that you want to share? No, I, I think we're ready to answer some questions. I want to thank Amr as well for yeah. the, the insights and, and the cryptic messages both. So, uh, and for his time, obviously, but I think, um, I think you spoke to a lot of what this program is about. So uh, thank you for that. And yeah, I think if I'm, I don't know if Amanda has anything else to add or we can start looking at the questions. We have a couple of questions uh, in the Q&A panel, but please, uh, type in any other questions you may have. Um, so I think we have a, a very specific question from Sabir Ahmed, who is a mathematician, which is really cool because I like math a lot, but it's a question mm -hmm. about, uh, and he's also a, a PhD researcher and he's looking for um, Chicago booth to, you know, what sort of tools you can generally give him. I'm not sure if this particular program or just in general, uh, but I think maybe we can um, perhaps, I think this may warrant like a, a, a private conversation with Sober to respond to some of his more specific yeah. questions. Um, Heba is, uh, says she's currently off uh, jo at the job and in a transition period, but she was in a managerial position on her last job which was two months ago. And so um, she thinks the program is a good, is exactly what she's looking for, but she's asking if it was possible for her to apply uh, without a nomination letter from an organization. That's a great question. So um, in terms of a sponsor letter, there's multiple uh, ways we look at sponsors, right? Because it's not always, um, the man your manager that you directly report to. Uh, a mentor, Right. If you're an owner, typically if you're a CEO, uh, it could be a co-owner or another um, key stakeholder in your business. Uh, so in your case, Heba, um, if you have had mentors, especially at your last organization or out in your own network that can help distill why you want to be in this program, what you intend to learn, and what are those objectives, that will be very helpful. And in that case, Mina, if someone is like self-sponsoring, um, would they need two of those letters then instead of one? or is it Yeah, I mean, typically we ask for two, um, for self-sponsors or for individuals who may have less experience in, in the work environment, I would say. Again, we, we take all applications and we don't have a very core set, you know, uh, criteria, but I think those sponsor letters are extremely helpful in addition to the interviews that we'll conduct on Zoom. Right. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, I, I think it does, but uh, Heba, if you have more questions or follow-ups to that, please type them in. Um, any more questions? I know there are several folks here attending who are also from the public sector. Did, if you also have any specific questions related to that, um, or just generally any questions before we wrap up. 
And, and maybe I can jump into for public sector. So um, the process we've been following is getting nominations from a variety of ministries. Although it's organized by the Ministry of Planning, we are taking recommendations and referrals from past participants, um, from individuals perhaps, you know, that you know of that could be a good candidate for the program. So um, it's really, you know, we would just need a sponsor letter from whatever ministry you're a part of, but um, there's no one set way to take public sector um, nominations. Nelly, can you add to that at all? Since you work so closely. Yeah, uh, of course, I actually, there is um, a question here that could help us also uh, with this part of the conversation about if the program is, is strictly applicable only to the Ministry of Planning uh, within the public sector candidates, or is it open to high rank government officials? So. Yeah, no, it's not only the Ministry of Planning. The Ministry of Planning is a, is a partner on the program to uh, invite other ministries and other public sector organizations to participate and to apply. Uh, so we, in the first round, had participants from all sorts of, uh, all, like uh, many of the ministries and other public sector organizations, including the president's office and other uh, high rank uh, government offices, so it's not, uh, it's definitely not uh, the minute only the Ministry of Planning, no. Right. Um, and I would say it's similar to how we talked about the private sector. So we're going to look across the ministries, right, for the right individual for the program and the skills and the background and the experience and what their learning objectives are. So it's really important for us to have that diversity coming from the public sector. So it could be the Ministry of Education. It could be um, uh, the, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was health. Yeah, we right? had the Ministry of oh, nice. Education, Higher Education, Finance, um, finance. Health. Uh, we've, we had representation from all sorts of uh, ministries, uh, international cooperation. Uh, all sorts of organizations as well that are not necessarily ministries, but public sector. So um, anyone in any of those organizations who is a C at the C a senior level is welcome to apply. So um, I hope that answers the question. Nihel is asking about the sponsor letter and what it should include. Great question. So um, actually as a follow-up from this info session, we can send you a PDF of all the questions in the application, including the sponsor letter. So the sponsor letter is really open-ended for the sponsor to complete. Um, and Amanda, if you wanna talk about uh, the learning objectives in the sponsor letter, that'd be great. Sure. <clears throat> so as you know, I mentioned beforehand, there's a lot of follow-up that goes on after the program. One of the things that we're gonna check and that's included in the um, sponsor letter is what your learning objectives are and then also what your sponsor's learning objectives are for you. This program is a large investment and we want to make sure that you know you're accomplishing your goals and a big part of that is aligning on your goals with that of your organizations and your recommenders. So that's a big part of the sponsor letter. There's also questions about your past, uh, you know, your past experience in the role, um, some unique accomplishments that you've achieved while during, you know, in your role and during your tenure, as well as information on, on gaps for your, that your, um, your sponsor sees. So is there any gaps in, in your experience or things that they think that they would like you to learn that's something that they would detail as well? Yes, an opportunity as an example that yeah, uh, they, yeah as, as this candidate goes through the program um this could really help propel them to the next level it's so like Ummer's example he was in a transition right so this helped fill those gaps and then put him in a different place so i hope that helps and, and i think the follow-up um pdf will be informative as well 
I will also put on the on the chat here the link to the, the program website and um, um, a reminder of the deadline, which was November 27th. So we're about a month away now from from the deadline. So I wouldn't I wouldn't wait <laughs> till the last minute to do this. Sure. The application does need some uh, effort. Um, any if, any other questions at this point? Mina, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, well, the timing is very really important. Why November 27th? The program kicks off in March 4th. And as I mentioned, we've all mentioned the rigor and the preparation that needs to happen. So our process is first selection. So after November 27th, my team and I will go through all applications, all sponsor letters um, in detail. And we have a process in terms of how we identify the right cohort, which is extremely important, which includes that interview. And so the interview timeline, the it, clock starts ticking after November 27th. And then the early January is when we will reach out to sponsors, we'll reach out to participants on if they've been accepted into the program. Um, and then we would need to help them coordinate, right? Um, all of the materials. So once you're, you've been approved, you're part of the cohort, we introduce you, we have an LMS platform, a learning management system platform, where we'll use, the team will use to communicate with the cohort um, with multiple readings. We have now opened up an online um, finance module, which will uh, be delivered to all participants two weeks prior to the start date of the program. So that'll be in February. So it's very quick after that. Um, and our team will really support you in terms of uh, answering the logistical questions once you're in the program. So that, that's why I think we're encouraging the November 27th. Uh, and we really, really hope you'll nominate and apply. All right, I do not see any more questions right now, but uh, please uh, do reach out to us if you have any more questions, if you think of anything else. Um, the recording of this session, we will email to you, but also it will be on our social media channels um, tomorrow or the day after. So feel free to also share it with others who may be interested in the program. And, uh, Thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank my fellow panelists. <laughs> thank you, Amanda, Mina, and Am. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank, you. thank you so much, Nelly. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.